All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to get 10 gigabit speeds out of your Synology NAS without having to purchase a 10 gigabit switch, which still are pretty expensive. All right, so this is really perfect for people who really just have that one computer that they need 10 gigabit performance to, but the rest of the computers, hey, it's fine if it's gigabit. And so this can actually be done remarkably cheap, assuming your NAS has a PCIe expansion card in it. And so there are some pretty cheap PCIe 10 gigabit cards out there. And so you can pick one of those up for your computer and one for your Synology NAS, assuming it's got that PCIe card slot. However, do check the compatibility. I'm not gonna go through that right now, but I've also got a video on how to set up a 10 gigabit card. So if you've got a laptop and you've got Thunderbolt 3, you can also use something like this. I'll go ahead and leave a link to it in the description, but this is a great 10 gigabit to Thunderbolt 3 converter that allows laptops that have Thunderbolt 3 cards to get full on 10 gigabit performance for fairly cheap. I think this was like 120 bucks. So all in, you can do this pretty easily for under 150 bucks if you get those cheaper PCIe 10 gigabit cards. And so the way you're gonna do this is you're going to connect that 10 gigabit card directly into your PC via a CAT6 cable. And then if you wanna do longer runs, you can get the CAT6A, but I'll leave that to other people to explain. Just make sure your network cable can handle those 10 gigabit speeds. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is install your 10 gigabit card. I've got a video on that in the description. And so once you've installed that card, don't plug any cables into it and just go ahead and log into DSM using the gigabit ports that you were already using. And then from DSM, go into control panel, network, and under network interface, you should see the LAN5. And so this is my 10 gigabit card. It currently has an IP address on there, but we need to fix that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to assign it an IP address that's on a different subnet. And in this example, I will use one that I'm almost positive will be open on your group. And so for this, we're gonna be using the subnet 10.10.10.x. .10 this is way higher than most people's ranges are gonna go. And so it's incredibly unlikely that this will cause issue with that. And if you're on that large of a network, you probably know what you're doing when it comes to subnets. And so we're just gonna go ahead and select it and click edit. And so right now it defaults to DHCP and instead we're going to change it to a manual configuration. This is where we're going to set that IP address to be 10.10.10 .10 and we will call this 5. And under subnet mask, enter 255.255.255.0. Then you want to make sure to uncheck this set as default gateway because you don't want random communication trying to go down that. All right, and so now that is set up. And so all we have to do is click, okay. Oh, it's giving us an error that we actually need to have a valid gateway and valid router, even though these are never gonna get used because we're setting up our own configuration. And another thing is, it's actually going to force us to do a MTU of 1500, though you can change this once we're connected. Synology actually does a pretty good job of making sure everything's compatible before allowing you to just go willy-nilly with the MTU, which is a good thing. And so now you've got that set up, just reflect these settings on my screen here and go ahead and click OK. All right, and so now that is all set up. So now the next step is to connect the cable directly from your Synology's 10 gigabit card into your computer's 10 gigabit card or 10 gigabit adapter if you're using that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so right now, I've connected my computer directly to my Synology NAS. But now that I'm using that ethernet cable, my computer is now on Wi-Fi. That is the one issue with doing this. But if you've got two ports, or you can also buy one of these cheap gigabit converters, you can still have a wired connection to your computer as well. And the way we've got this set up is it's not gonna cause any issues whatsoever because we're on a totally different network basically. And so now that you've logged in, go ahead and you can go back into control panel and just make sure everything's still working with the network. 
And you should see that this LAN5 is now connected. And here we can go into edit and set the MTU to 9000 for jumbo frames, but everything's got to support it. I know my network card and my computer does, so I'm going to do this. If you want more information on jumbo frames, I've actually already covered this. So I'll leave a link in the description to that. All right, and so now that that's done, all we need to do is set up our computer to be on the same subnet on that port, and we need to set it a static IP address. And so this is gonna work the same between Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's just going to have little different ways of doing it. So on a Mac, all you have to do is go into network settings, go into whatever ethernet cable it is, and set it up manually. And you're gonna to wanna to put it on the same subnet as we just set up. So that was 10.10.10. And now we're gonna put it as 10. This way, we're on the same subnet, but not trying to get the same IP address as the Synology's 10 gigabit port. And so for subnet mask, we've gotta match it by 255.255.255.0. And router we don't need and just hit apply and so now it is all connected so let's go ahead and test it out so right now I'm logged in using Wi-Fi but let's log in using that new IP address we set up which is the 10.10.10.5 and that is the IP address of the 10 gigabit card on our Synology all right, and we can hit it, that is a good sign. All right, and so now we are connected at 10 gigabit speeds. And so it should all work the same. We'll go back over here, and we are going to set up SMB. And we're just gonna put in that new IP address. All right, and as we can see here, we've connected, and let's just make sure we've got those 10 gigabit speeds. All right. So I'm using Blackmagic speed test, which I love. And so just like that, we are getting way over gigabit speeds, which means everything's working correctly. And so really that's all we had to do to set this up. There's no need to build a crossover cable or anything like that. It just works out of the box now. I'm glad the future is like this. So once that's set up, you're now good to go. And you'll be able to use 10 gigabit anytime you need it on that one computer, while the rest of your house gets that gigabit connection, which for most people is perfect. And honestly, pretty cheap. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Leave any questions or comments in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.